Hello, welcome to another edition of The Naked Truth. My name is John Singletary and my name is Ramon Rowan. Today we're going to talk about independence. Um, not just in general, but independence in terms of in the African American community, the vital importance of us having an independent system that allows us to recirculate money within our own community to create jobs to be able to service the needs of our own people. What that does is strengthens us so that we can come to the table requiring mutual respect when it comes to issues in our community that deal with uh, social mechanisms that have a large impact on not only us personally, our businesses, but our families, things like fatherhood and the deadbeat dad myth that we talked about earlier, HUD and the reverse mortgages. All those are things that we can address within our community, particularly if we were more independent. And that has nothing to say um, in terms of us being anti-white, anti-Latino, anti-Jewish. It has to be doing has to deal with being pro-African American, that we want the best for ourselves, and if we provide it to ourselves, then certainly other people looking on, they're going to expect that, you know, if you're good to yourself, then you will expect them to be good to you. How in the world can, like for a lady for instance, if she's not good to herself and respect herself, then it's difficult for her to get a man to respect her. And by the same token, mm -hmm. if we don't respect our community, if we don't respect our children, if we don't respect the process of capitalism within our community, then others mm -hmm. are going to say it's not important to them. Right. Um, it's a, yeah, John and I are periodically, we are going to talk about this periodically. It's not going to be um, this month and then next year. No, we're going to talk about this because it's very important for African Americans to understand the importance of having an, a black economy that's independent, not dependent upon the white dollar. And also, 60% of a black owned business employs African Americans. Now, John, I recently read an article, it was about a Chinese uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And they asked the question why do you hire um, so many Orientals? And he said, I am not anti-black. I'm not anti-white. He said, I am pro-Oriental. His uh, Chinese. I'm pro-Chinese. So that, you know, you would ask me, why would I prefer to hold, you know, why would I prefer to hire Chinese? It's not because I'm anti-black. He said he's just pro-Chinese. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's we nothing wrong with look that. At, we, two things we need to look at. One is, when an Oriental comes in, opens up a beauty supply, and oftentimes they will not hire an African American to work in that, no. but yet they'll sell to you. They'll sell to you. Uh, what they're saying is that we believe that you will buy from us. We'll take your money, but we're certainly not going to spend our money and give it to you in terms of wages. We're not going to allow you to be a part of the system that sucks the money out of your community. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to look at. We have to look at the fact that if we own our own businesses, then we're recircling that money. Now, we can do it. It's not that we can't, mm -hmm. uh, because there are some products, there are some things we need to have the same mentality that we have when it comes to our hair. Mm -hmm. you know, you don't find a black man going into a white barbershop to get his hair cut. Oh, no. You don't find the average black lady going into a white beauty salon to get their hair fixed. Right. Absolutely not. No. They value those things, mm -hmm. and as a result, they will only entrust them to the person that they feel mm -hmm. in their community mm -hmm. that is going to give them the very best. Right. It's the same concept that we need to use when we take a look at some other things. Mm -hmm. When we purchase a home, mm -hmm. we need to take a look at finding a black realtor. A black realtor. When we go to the doctor, if we can find a competent physician, mm -hmm. a competent 
attorney, a competent mechanic. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is more value mm -hmm. than just going to the barbershop and looking good. Mm -hmm. We're also recirculating mm -hmm. money within the black community because that black barber, that black beauty mm -hmm. salon uh, attendant owner, mm -hmm. they use that money to pay for house, a house, to pay for a car, to mm -hmm. pay for education for their children. Right. You go to Atlanta and you see black uh, owners of beauty salons, you know, they may drive around in a Maserati, they may drive around in a BMW, mm -hmm. and Mercedes, and that's a good thing because mm -hmm. it, it, it makes you feel good to know that they are able to earn a living off of capitalism within our community. Now, we need to do it in other areas. Right. Can you do it Well, I mean, you know, look, if you think about it, and we talked about this before, uh, about the, uh, the Oklahoma the Oklahoma, Tulsa, the Tulsa Oklahoma, yeah. and how they had black hospitals, the black, black law firms, right. black this and black that, black owned businesses. Now, um, John and I and his wife Carla, we spoke about this last week about jobs. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're black in America, you're going to be subject to racism on the job, okay? Um, I know a young lady that was terminated from a job after doing 17 years mm -hmm. on this job. Well, John the the employer, uh, the, the manager, um, didn't like the way the employee, you know, didn't like her attitude. And her attitude was like, hey, I know my job. Or if the employee, if the manager said, do it this way, well, the 17 veteran said, you know, that's not going to work. And if it doesn't work, she looks bad. But eventually that, that, that um, young, young lady, she was terminated after doing 17 years of um, employment. Now, the problem with this is that, one, if you're African American, you're gonna deal with the culture. You're gonna have, you have to deal with the culture that's in America. And number two, if you are working for anybody, be it HP, Microsoft, Nucor Steel, it doesn't matter, McDonald's, it doesn't matter who you're working for. If you are working for them, Consider your job temporary. I don't care what kind of name they give you. You know, say, oh, you're a permanent employee. No such thing in America. You are temporary because they can come to you and tell you, look here, John, today's your last day. Of course, and we're not saying that there shouldn't be some blacks that work for no. corporate America or white mm -hmm. America. That's fine. What right. we're saying is that as much as possible, as much as possible, if you can, operate a business within your own community, then do that. Then do that, right. You know, there's benefits on both sides. There's mm -hmm. benefits on both sides. But if you can, certainly it's a good thing for your community because we tend to employ more of our own race. And that's in any nationality. If you're white, you tend to employ more whites. If you're black, African American, you tend to employ more African Americans in your business. Mm -hmm. Latinos, Jews, I mean, that's just happens to be the way that it is. Well, I mean, I think that you're absolutely right, John. I 100% agree with you. And I think that we need to also look at the fact that, look, we buy iPhones. I got an iPhone. John has an iPhone. We, you know, but what happened? What is, do you think that there is a black engineer out there that can design something that's comparable? And we buy it. Sure. I believe so. And so we need more uh, we need more of the technology, more job creators in the African American community so that we can hire our own. We're not saying we're not uh, anti other races, we're just pro black. The black unemployment rate is, uh, has always been higher than the national average. And that's really a modest number because some say the unemployment rate in the black community is more like 20 some odd percent instead of the 12% it actually mm -hmm. is. So we're, what we want to do here at Judicial Freedom Riders and um, exposing this on the naked truth is one, hey, encourage those business owners. Hey, if you got a business, you got an idea, you want to share it with us on, um, on, our, on our channel, hey, hey, send us that. Let's talk about it. Um, but it's, it's so vitally important that we do something about this unemployment rate and also our dependency. Malcolm X and, and, and Garvey, Marcus Garvey, sure. preached about independence for the black man. And right now, we're not as in the, yeah, we may have the Michael Jordans, 
the, the Magic Johnsons, the P. Diddy's, what have you, you know, but there's not enough of us. But there's, what about the regular folk? You know, sure. what about the regular folk? Um, cab companies. Um, right. Don't have to be huge. You don't have to be huge, right. A business that you make. Plumbing business. Sure. Right. Plumbing, you got electrical, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we can do within our own community that the ordinary, everyday man mm -hmm. can earn a decent living. A decent living, right. You know, that we can take care of the families, you know. So we're just encouraging that uh, if you're in the position to start and to run, operate, and to be able to sustain uh, a livelihood out of operating an African-American business, then please consider it um, because it helps the community at large. And also, please support those businesses. Sometimes you may be a little, um, sometimes you might have to, you know, deal with some things. Um, because you're not going to get the bells and whistles that you might with a business already established. Well, give them opportunity. Give them opportunity. Often the times the other businesses started off and there had to be some concessions made. It right. wasn't the perfect business. And, right. and, and no business is necessarily perfect. But we have to get out of just being confined to the beauty shop, the barber shop, mm -hmm. and a restaurant. Right. But on our next, um, on our future broadcast, we're going to be talking about this a little more about, especially about, we need to go in depth, John, about government contracts. Oh, yeah. We oh, need yeah. to go in depth about government contracts. Yeah. And that is the way to go, but there's a lot to it than what this segment will be able to contain. $800 billion in goods and services alone in the United States. Just think about if African Americans were to get their portion of that. Now, oftentimes, if we have enough black businesses, African-American businesses, and then we have them address that segment, it's a whole lot better than just one person in the segment going to try and get a contract. Mm -hmm. And so, we first have to establish and to operate African-American businesses within our own community, mm -hmm. and then when other services are provided, for instance, um, work with the South Carolina First Steps program and there was a time in which I saw within the program where they literally decided that they would rather give money back to the state rather than to give grants to African American businesses. Yeah, well. To give money back to the state. That was, I mean, Well, you know, me, John, heartless. Race is always a factor. But you know what? Yeah. That is the naked truth. The naked, <laughs> the truth. naked truth. Um, July 4th, we will be starting our uh, membership rally of, um, of joining the Jiu for Freedom Riders. And uh, we want to get one million members in one year. One million members in one year. Membership costs $36 a year. And um, what we try to, what we want to do is that we want to affect change in our justice system and in our community www.jfrinc.org again $36 a year our membership drive starts uh, Independence Day uh, July 4th and we're trying to get a million members in one year, one year. this has been another edition of The, the Naked, Naked Truth, Truth.